Guys, I've had a lot of requests on YouTube for a video on how to make a pump drill. And I've never had a lot of faith in pump drills, but I've never played with one. So I didn't know if you could get enough downward pressure on one or not to make an ember in eastern woodlands. So we're going to give it a shot today, see if we can put one together, see if we can make an ember. Okay, if we're going to make a pump drill, the first thing we're going to need is a counterweight. And we are going to burn a hole through this and then bore through it with a tool. If we're going to do this primitively, we're going to have to do it with fire to burn a hole through this counterweight. And it's just a piece of pine that's fairly dry. We'll just have to burn this out very similar to the way you would a bowl, except try to bore a hole straight through it for our shaft. Okay, once we've got our hole in there, now we're going to have to make a spindle that will actually hold a tulip poplar bit, but will friction fit down inside this hole. We're gonna make that. Okay, we're gonna try to make our spindle out of this. It's a little bit whacked on this end down here. We're not gonna be able to straighten that out, but if we have something this long, it's going to be okay, I think. So we'll cut this off with our saw here, strip the bark off of it, and get this ready to be our spindle holder. It's going to hold our bit. This will be our spindle, actually. It'll move, the string will move up and down, and this will actually do the turning once we get the counterweight in place and things like that. But we also need something that will hold a bit because we want to be able to interchange bits on the end of this. So we have to put a chuck, create a chuck on here that we can tie off with a piece of rope. A little wobbly, a little off center, but may still work. Okay, now we got to have a T bar. Basically, that's going to go here and has to ride up and down this with two strings attached here and here in a triangle. We're going to use this piece of tulip poplar here and try to shave it down just a little bit. I don't need to get too excited with it. Then I'm going to have to bore a hole in it, the diameter of my spindle. And really this doesn't have to be anything perfect by any means. Now if I wanted to, I could put a couple of spots on here to tie string to. I'll probably just notch it before it's over with. But I'm just cleaning it up a little bit before I bore a hole in it. The place I'm going to make my hole in it, I want it to be pretty well centered. So I'll measure that with a piece of string. And then I kind of want that area pretty flat. I've got a pretty good flat right there, and I suspect that's pretty close to the center anyway. And what I did was I thinned this out pretty good on this side. Kind of dished it out a little bit here to thin it before I started boring my hole in there from this side with my knife. And then when my point came through, I started boring from the other side. To clean that up a little bit here. Okay. Now we need to see where we're at on this because this has to travel pretty freely and I don't have quite a big enough hole in there yet. So I'm going to, have to cut that out some more with my knife because this has to travel freely, very freely up and down 
this. So I almost didn't pick a branch that was wide enough. And I'm just going to have to keep boring it out a little bit with my knife a little at a time until I get it right. And then I'll try to polish it somehow to make it smooth. Getting close now for sure. Good. Okay, so I've gotten this thing to the point now where it's not too bad. I'm going to rub some fixing wax on this spindle portion. I'm going to rub that in real good with my hands. Kind of heat it up and rub it in. And then I'm going to slide this over the top and you can see now we've got a lot less friction that thing's going to ride up and down pretty good on there that's what we're looking for about ready to test this thing as far as if it's even going to be workable or not to see how well it's going to actually spin and that's going to be important because i don't have a lot of confidence in the fire making abilities of something like this in eastern woodlands only because most of the material i find takes a pretty good amount of downward pressure and the downward pressure of a setup like this really is controlled by the counterweight the counterweight has to be pretty heavy you're pushing down on it when you're turning it and then riding it up and down but you don't really have a lot of downward pressure pushed into it like you would with an actual bow drill so i kind of question that a little bit but take a little bit of this fixing wax and kind of polish this hole a little bit with it All right, I'm gonna cut some temporary string grooves in this thing. And when I say temporary, I mean I'm just gonna notch it out real fast on the ends in a couple spots, just like this. Just a couple quick notches. Let's see here, let's go straight in with these notches into a shear cut, just like that. And just kind of pop those out, just like that. One on each side, and that's where we're gonna put our string. And we'll just put loops on there to start off with so we can kind of trial this thing and see how it's going to work. Okay, so let's talk about real quick how this is supposed to work. I have cut a saw curve from the top of this spindle portion and I just kind of rounded this off and bull nosed it just so we could kind of see if it's going to work. And there's a little spot in the table here where there's a hole. So I'm just going to leave it there. Now, you've got it tied off to this T-member and this T has to ride up and down on the spindle. So you pre-wind it so that it wraps the string at the top, just like this. And then you would take it and you would push it down and let it rise up. And if it's working properly, which I'm probably not putting enough force into it, I don't have the, the trick to it yet. There we go. And you kinda gotta keep it even or it's not gonna work for you. But it's not, actually it is drilling a hole in the table here. Um, I think this spindle might need to be a little bit longer to be honest with you. I think you could definitely build up some heat like that. Huh. That's actually pretty impressive, that whole smoking. Okay. I'm convinced. Let's try to make a fire. Alright, so now... If I want to make this a chuck, I'm going to have to kind of split this almost like a frog gig. Um, polish the end of it, drill it into that table. And I'm going to back up just a little bit and thin that down just a tad. Just taking the bark off of it basically, more than anything else. 
and I'm going to carefully split this like I would if I were making a gig. So I'm going to split it in a cross for the most part. Just trying to get it as round as I can first. I'm actually going to drop it right here into the rocks to split it. And I'm going to try to get my blade as centered as I can get it. You see that thing splitting out right there? Right there. As long as that thing's splitting even, I'm okay. I definitely don't want the thing to run off. Okay, get my knife out of there. It's running off a little bit to one side. Now we're going to try to split the other side of it here. going slow being careful to watch where everything's splitting okay. now I've got four prongs in there basically just like if I were making a kit okay so I've got a small chunk of tulip poplar here and the beauty of something like this is going to be that I can change the bits in and out I don't have to have such a big piece of poplar to make my set. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to teardrop shape this thing to kind of a point in the end. Shave these sides down just like this. Just sheer cuts up my knife. got to keep this fairly straight so I'm going to kind of flatten out two sides of this just like this you can see how I'm flattening that out on two sides and again I've got to keep it fairly straight as well now I'm flattening out four sides just like that I'm not making it round I'm making it square because that is what's going to sit down inside here at an opposite angle so this corner is actually going to sit down inside here just like that and then I'm going to wrap this with cordage to be my chuck for my drill bit so that it can't split out okay this part okay this part's important so we made this flat on four sides, which gives us a corner here, corner here, corner here, and a corner here. Those corners are going to fit into the opening of our chuck so that these fingers that we created are on the flat. And we're going to put it in there about three quarters of the way as deep as we want it in the end. And then we're going to lash this thing, and then we're going to take it in there the rest of the way. So what we'll do is we'll take and we'll just make a lashing on here, just a normal lash. Give ourselves a little bit of room here and I think we're actually going to wrap this from the bottom up it'll make a tighter lash that way and I'm going to pull it down as tight as I can get it if I had a toggle I'd be using a toggle I don't happen to have one on me but if I had one laying here close I'd be using that to make sure that I get this just as extremely tight as I possibly can while I'm wrapping it up. And when I come around the last time and go through this loop, I'm going to draw it up inside with the other one here, just like this. And then I'm going to trim this off, just like this. Okay. Now I would probably burn those ends to keep that from coming undone with a lighter.
Okay, folks, well, I hope you enjoyed this video today on how to make a pump drill setup. Like I said, it was an experimentation process for me as well because I've never made one. I've seen them before. Obviously, seen lots of pictures of them, but never tried to make one. I think hindsight being 2020, there's a couple things that uh, I would do different the next time I make one of these. Number one, uh, I'd probably keep from hitting myself in the face with it twice uh, when I'm pumping up and down on it. It jumps out of the socket or the hole. Number two, I would probably make this thing longer. I think that the longer this upper spindle is, the better time you're going to have it getting more rotations for every stroke, just like a longer bow with a bow drill. It's a rhythm thing, and it takes a little bit of time to get used to it. I've made two embers now. I've messed with it probably four or five times uh, between burning it in, the initial test, and then making embers. And there's definitely a rhythm to it that you have to get used to to let up just enough pressure to let it rewind, but hold enough downward pressure on it to keep it from jumping out of your hole in your fireboard. So it takes a little getting used to. But I think that, you know, this chuck system is going to work perfect for me. I think that this interchangeable bit in and out is ideal. And I think that this is plenty heavy. I was afraid this piece of pine wasn't going to be heavy enough for a counterweight, but I think it's plenty heavy. And I think you also have to make sure that you've got good free travel on this upper part, and you also have to be sure that while you're doing it, you're keeping this thing even, because if this thing becomes uneven for some reason on you, that's going to cause you a problem when you're going up and down. It's going to want to bind. I'm Dave Canterbury with Pathfinder School. I appreciate you joining me out for this video today. I appreciate you learning with me. I appreciate you checking out my videos, giving me comments, your support, and your views. I thank you for everything you do for our school, our family, our business, all of our instructors, affiliates, sponsors, and friends. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.